how's it going guys welcome to audio addiction uh i'm going to just uh, we're gonna cut out straight to the point basically so luke and i have been recording probably for the better half of a half an hour at this point and uh i was an idiot and didn't press record so uh uh yeah so now we're here uh but we made some really good jokes so hopefully uh we will still make the same jokes or in the same and they'll totally not be funny at all and this it would time. totally be funny still because you know ha 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 humor but anyway he could say uh, his name and uh you know his thing and all that jazz okay uh i'm luke <laughs> i feel so i feel so like distant <laughs> like i feel so disingenuous now but i'm luke um i put out a song yesterday under this crazy band name which is my name uh, J. Luke Cloutier. Yeah, I put the J in front of my name like a douche, um, which <laughs> I am going to say. <laughs> See, this, like... is, this is the best. I'm sorry. We couldn't have planned this out any better. <laughs> because Luke was so serious about all this stuff, and I didn't get any of it. So now I'm really Dude. frustrated because it was actually hilarious. So anyway, he can explain why there's a J in front of his name because... Uh, we're just gonna seem like really disingenuous, but I swear to God, it's really genuine. So you should no, it is, it is, so, <laughs> it is. Um, so it's J. Lou Cloutier because my first name is Jeffrey. I didn't just, <laughs> I didn't just put a letter in front of my <laughs> name to like be an asshole. It's uh, it's my my first name. So, but everybody calls me Luke. Like literally. 100% of people call me Luke. So, uh, yeah, don't I just wanted Jeffrey. to... Don't go to... Don't. A, if you go to a show and you call him Jeffrey, he's not going to pay attention to you. Yeah. He may be, but... No, I will. I probably will. will. But don't call, him, don't call him Jeffrey. I Only if you're a dick about it. Like, if you're like, hey, Jeffrey, I'll be like, yeah, fuck you. But if My you're like, Luke, hi, hi, Jeffrey, I'll be like, hey, what's up? Well, yeah, no. But call me Luke, why. please. So before everyone calls me, I can hear the people of the internet chirping right now going, wow, like, Luke really put a J in front of his name, like a douche, and it's, no, it's just my name. It's just what it is. It's how I've signed my checks for, I don't know. That was very, You're, that was even more deep than the first cut, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if you want people to know that you sign your checks like that, because now somebody's going to be like, J. Luke Cloutier. <laughs> Well, they oh you can't read you can't read my fucking signature. There's no, <laughs> no. So all right. So I know that this sounds stupid to bring up Homestead because if you're watching the interview, then you don't realize that we already talked about Homestead for like 20 minutes before. But <laughs> at the last Homestead show, and it's funny because I'm holding a sharpie. Um, someone asked me to sign an like asked the whole band at the uh -huh. merch table to sign an autograph for them. Because they wanted to frame it, and I signed it. And the Tristan, who was in Homestead, was like, "Man, I really wasn't expecting you to have the worst signature out of everyone in the band, but like, your signature sucks." And I was like, "Oh." So then I like had this weird like moment of introspection where I was like, "Maybe I'm never meant to be successful because like I can't like oh. sign an autograph." Oh, like, don't say that. Bud. It was just like, it was like funny because i just i <laughs> fucked it man i don't know like my checks when i like go and like endorse a check it's, like, it's just some bullshit scribbles but it does say j there is a there j is, there is a j confirm that there is a j in there yeah yes just like in my project name so fuck you if you thought that it was j luke cloutier because i'm a douche it's because it's my name and i earned it so he did he worked for it <laughs> I did. He worked, he worked for the J. I told him Q, but he didn't listen to me, so it's it's okay. I'm just yeah. I'm a YouTube personality, so whatever. You know, don't listen to me. Um, you're all about them them views. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm the <laughs> that's why you're interviewing me. Uh, yeah, that's exactly why. I'm, if we're gonna go back to another thing that we talked about, because he was like, so Luke, okay. I, there's so many stuff that we talked about in this previous interview that didn't happen because I didn't record any of it, and it would have been great if we could have been like, hey, future Brandon, go to that flashback moment, and then it's just gonna be a black screen, and that's totally what I'm gonna do because it would be. <laughs> hilarious um but uh no like luke and i chatted for like a good 20 minutes and now it just seems like super like 
like we don't give a shit about the interview, but we give a shit about the interview because I, I give totally a shit do. about Luke. But it was funny though because I literally looked over and I was like, "Oh, this isn't recording," and I was like, "Oh wait, it's not recording." So now, now we're here. So um, I guess the first thing that I remember asking you, which is, uh, I guess who we already talked about Homestead, so we like completely like just like drove right over that issue. Um, but I guess we could talk about it again because it's really <laughs> funny. Um, but I guess the transition from like writing really heavy music, like real, I mean, obviously your stuff's personal, I assume for like your solo work, but I guess like what made you choose to go solo as opposed to maybe another band? <clears throat> um, you're, well, gonna um think, you're thinking about it and you're like, I already answered this, so how am I going to answer it now? <laughs> Well, I feel like now, though, I'm hearing the question a second time, and maybe I didn't answer it as good as I could have. The now first you time. can. Now I, it's like it was a purposeful. It was, yeah, it was, happened on purpose. <laughs> yeah, you were just warming me up. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't like. All right, I can't say this. Okay, I'm gonna say this. Say but it. But I want to be clear that I'm not shitting on my previous bandmates at all when I say this. Um, I just wanted to do a project that me and only me was, like, in charge of. That, like, that's really it. Like, I loved being in a band. Um, I'm still in a, in a band that hasn't, like, released music yet, but, like, I'm back in another band that's going to release music. Um, <clears throat> but, like, yeah, I just wanted to do something where... It was, like, totally me uh, kind of in control of it. And I just felt like this was... I mean, I always have wanted to... I've been writing songs. I wrote my first song. My, I sound like such a nerd saying that. But I wrote, <laughs> I wrote like, my first song on guitar when I was 13. And so, like, obviously it sucked ass. But, like... Yeah. yeah. I, like you know, I did it. Do at that age when... <laughs> They learn how to play an instrument and like figure out right. stuff. Well, I, I I learned I started playing guitar when I was six, so I like knew pretty well. But the thing is, like, okay, it's like the song sucks. Like if I played it now, yeah, everyone would be like, "That fucking sucks, you dumb idiot!" Like yeah. go back yeah. and take the hole that you called I can out. Say of. the same thing, yeah. Sure. But sure. when I was thirteen and I wrote that song because I had like doodled and like written random shit before that, but when I wrote that song when I was 13 and, like, showed, like, my mom and, like, my friends, they were, like, no, like, that's seriously, like, a good song. Like, that's pretty good. Um, and then I've just, like, ever since then, I just fell in love with, like, some people fall in love with playing guitar and they become, like, a riff person. I fell in love with songwriting. You know, just the the act of trying to write, like, the best song possible sure, and so sure. i've written so many shitty songs like um you know over the the course of the you know the years that i've been doing it but like yeah i don't know like i just love songwriting and um so i just felt like the combination of the fact that i wanted to like just be in control of like a project that i could put as much pressure or as little pressure on it as i wanted um, I could write and just, like, hone my writing skills and, like, I could have fun. And, like, if I wasn't having – like, if, I, if I'm – I mean, it's been a day, so I'm still having fun being a solo artist. <laughs> but, like, We're going to have to come I, back to this <laughs> reconvene later on. <laughs> yeah, call me tomorrow and see Yeah, okay, how I will. But, um, but, yeah, I mean, like, if I uh, – I don't know, like, this just seemed like it made sense. I mean – you know, if I'm ever not, like, having fun doing this, I don't have to do it. Same shit, like, one of the cool things about singer-songwriters is, like, or, like, not singer, about solo artists, I guess, yeah. is they can do whatever they want as far as the kind of music that they're making. So, like, there are plenty of dudes and gals who I have followed over the years who put out, like, a folk record and mm -hmm. then come back and put out almost, like, a not, like, a bad kind of, like, pop record, but, like, a more... I mean, it's just, like, you can just change and you never have to get bored and you can put yeah. out a record every year or a record every three years. Like, 
you can do whatever you want. So I just liked the idea of, like, I'm not waiting on anyone else. <clears throat> I'm not, like, doing anything, you know, that I want to do. Or, or, sorry, that I don't want to do. I am doing what I want to do. God, that would suck if I did this so I wouldn't ever do anything I wanted. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but, yeah, I just, it just seemed like a cool thing to do. Um, but I still miss, like, being in a band. I miss the camaraderie of being in a van and, you know, being an like an idiot, but whatever. I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, and I appreciate it. Cause I, I felt like not to, not to reverence our first interview interview, but like, I felt like this answer was like a little bit more like, I guess like thought out in, in that sense. Like, yeah. you know, I was like the first time around, I was like, yeah, that's cool. But now I'm like, wow i'm like it i think it, there's a lot of perspective that goes into it when you're like when you're in a band and you have so many like ideologies like from other people where they're like Maybe i'm not <laughs> right. feeling this or not and like i think it also translates to like what i do because a lot of the time like people think it's like a whole crew that goes into doing this stuff like it's right. just me i'm the only one who does it um if you dm me on any social media it's just me like right. there's something to be said about that and i you know i respect a lot of people who choose to go that solo route and do their solo thing because it's hard yeah. you know um it is it's really fucking expensive yes that too is there i i can definitely agree with that <laughs> but i think it's you know i think it's really important for bands to do that like especially like more like people who like are really passionate about what they do and especially if it's like so different from like you know what you previously have done or what you're currently right. doing i think it is you know a, a, it's a cool way to see somebody fr in different eyes like i like when i'm like listening to your stuff like when i listened to the song uh yesterday i was like this is so much different. Like, I'm just like, I just imagine Luke doing that, like, yell, yell, scream shit, you know? And I love that. But at the same yep. point, like, because I know you from that life, but, like, other people yep. may not, may only people may only know you from that perspective of being, like, a solo artist and, like, wow, he's got such a great voice. He's such a talented person. And then they it's find funny, out, man. like, you're in Homestead, and they're like, what? Like, this guy does did this for, like, you know, yeah. four or five years, and now he's not doing, now he's doing this. So, like... I think yeah. it's cool to see that the flip side of the coin, you know? Yeah, I think um, it is like it's funny how you say a flip side of a coin because I feel like that's exactly what it is <clears throat> because it is two sides, but it's still the same coin to me, like being creative. And also, the thing that got me into the artists in, you know, the world of like singer, songwriter, folk, mm -hmm. whatever music was like the feeling that it gave me like the way that I felt, how do I say this without sounding like a total cornball? <laughs> like I remember the first time I heard the song like knives by city and color. <laughs> City and Color, a pill for lonely. If you you guys won't get this because obviously yeah. it didn't re wasn't recorded, but we we had both pulled out our pill for lo a pill for loneliness, which you can buy Are now you? anywhere uh, at your local record store online. Um, and now the bitch is gonna seem like it's just like us making a ploy to just include City and Color in the video, and it's absolutely true. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna let Luke finish so I can not seem like I'm an advert in the middle of this interview. <laughs> yeah, it was it was great. Um, I feel like it's un it's it's non recreatable. It is we, not. We screwed the pooch on that we, one. We definitely did. That was too too good of a move. But we still will probably throw it in. <laughs> we'll still throw it in. Yeah. Yeah. But no, like, I remember the first time I heard that song, and the way, like, it, I remember I was sitting, I was ditching class, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I was ditching class, and I was sitting in a comfy chair, and I just was, like, listening to it, and I literally remember, like, like, I was like this, and I just remember, like, laying back, and just, like, listening, and being like, wow, this is, like, exactly what I'm feeling right now, which this is the corny part where I'm like going to be, it said something I didn't have the words to say myself. Well, boo fucking who? But like, that's, <laughs> that's, like, that's like what it did. Oh my and god. The same shit when I got into like, you know, the first time I heard the difference between Hell and Home by Counterparts. Oof. 
it like said things that I felt like I was trying to figure out like it just like channeled it you know and so for me like even though sonically the the two are very different you know if I think that like I mean don't get me wrong I love folk music and I love hardcore I also think there's a bunch of folk artists that suck ass, and I think there's a bunch of hardcore bands that suck ass. 100%. And yeah. It totally it does has nothing to do with like the skill, with like the aesthetic, with how cool it is. It totally has to do with whether I feel anything when I hear the emotional those, value uh, of the track. Yeah, exactly. And so, like, you know, in a way, the two have always, for me, like influenced each other. Um, because, like, I just wanted to be able to, I don't know, express, I wanted when I was a kid to get to the point where I could say the things that I felt like other people didn't know how to say. Sure, yeah. Um, Not that this song that I just put out yesterday is that deep at all. It's really not. But, like, still, like, you know, maybe there's some kid, you know, it's not deep to me because I'm 23 years old, but there might be a kid who's like 17 who hears it and is like, oh shit, like, yeah, this is kind of like what I'm... What I'm life, yeah. Yeah, like, like this is this is it for me right now. And so, I don't know, I just always wanted to be able to write music that expressed feelings. And I know that's like, I feel like everyone would say that. Like, no musician would be like, <laughs> Yeah, like, I just don't feel anything about the I'm art. I'm a robot. I... <laughs> yeah. But, like, I feel like I'm, I am I want to say that I mean it just to, like, a really deep extent, you know, is that I just – that's always been the biggest thing <clears throat> no, for me. I... A lot of bigger genres missed me. Why, like, a lot of pop music missed me and why a lot of, like – even, like, a lot of rock music missed me. Like, hair metal, I fucking – hate hair metal <laughs> so much like like but it's because it doesn't make me feel anything anything yeah. like it i watch them like in like leather pants with long hair yeah and i'm just like this is not like talking and i know that there's gonna be like the one asshole that's like bro have you heard every rose has its thorn by poison he's like gonna that. be like this the oh. keyboard warrior is coming out he's gonna be like <laughs> Yeah, that was exactly. my keyboard sound, guys. Just so you know, it's not me <laughs> hacking up a loogie or something. You know, <laughs> just so you guys are aware of that. But, um, but no, I I I hundred percent agree, and I also feel like I think that's mainly the reason why a lot of us people get into that this style of music is because it's so like you know it's so emotive, it's so emotional, and yeah, that's why I, it continues to draw me back, and people are always like. Like I, I get this at work all the time, and if some of my coworkers watch this, uh, no hate. I'm just saying how I feel about this. But like, you know, they'll just be like, "Oh, well, they're screaming it, so like, you know, how can you understand what they're saying or something like that?" Yeah. And a lot of them are older, so I mean, I get it, you know. But like at the same point, like I'm like, it's just that emotional value of a thing. Like if you listen, if you read the lyrics and you're listening to how they emotionally like pour themselves out into a track, like that's powerful and that i don't think that any pop artist i don't think that any rock artist i don't think that any of those genres of music could really pour themselves out like that and they may seem like that and i'm not saying it's disingenuous on their part but i feel like for that type of music like if i go to listen to a counterparts record i know i'm gonna fucking go cry in my bathroom in the fetal position after i'm done listening to it because that shit hits But at the same point, like, you know, somebody might think that like Britney Spears hits, you know, and that's fine. You do your thing. That's how you live your life. But like, you know, I I think that's what's always driven me back to like heavier music is that that emotional and like lyrical, like punch that it delivers, I think is unquestionable to anybody. Well, and I think that the two are so like in like the two genres can be so intertwined to the point that this new song that I put out, like, almost everyone that worked on it, even though it's, like, a folk pop song, comes from the world of heavy music. Like, literally almost everyone. Like, Greg, who um, <clears throat> was, like, the head engineer and the producer 
on it. He um, he plays in the band End. I don't know if you know. Oh, yep. But like he plays in End. He played in like Shy Halud and Misery Signals. And the um, guy who co-owns the studio that I recorded it at, who also worked on this song for me, plays in The World Is. Um, Chris Teddy and, <clears throat> you know, the guy who uh, mixed it, Alex Newport, like, he was in a metal band in the 90s, and he did, like, At the Drive-In, he did, like, the big, like, the, like he, like, all those guys are, like, into heavy music, and yeah. understanding heavy music, like, they also, as, like, weird as it sounds, I think that that gives them an understanding of, like, folk music, too, because, you know, folk music is just so reliant on, like, how good a song is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so reliant on how it conveys the emotion that you want it to. And so, yeah, having people who, like, specialize in that genre, you know, I guess I could have, like, gone to, you know, people that don't get it, but I feel like they wouldn't have understood, like, why I wanted to make some of the decisions that I wanted to make on it and that kind of thing. Yeah, and I think it came out great, which you guys should all go check out in the description below. Um, but uh, the next thing, Luke, and we're probably going to just recycle a lot of stuff because, again, we've already talked about it. But I guess who are you influenced by? Um, uh, who, uh, I guess, more so now since you're more of a singer-songwriter solo run as opposed to being in a band. And uh, we may continue that bit that I told you we weren't going to continue, but we're definitely going to continue. <laughs> Um, I mean, like, through and through, obviously, my biggest influence is, uh, hold on, I'll get mine, too. <laughs> we'll do this bit again. This is... Oh, this God, you guys don't know. It was the first instance when we did it, it was just beautiful. But anyway, Luke, who's your, who's your influence, buddy? It's... City of Color! <laughs> the new record, Go for Loneliness. Out Buy it now. At your local record store, Luke. What variant did you get? Um, I don't know. Did I get the same one? Oh my gosh! Let's look. Oh, yep. we got the same one, dude. Oh wow! Yep. This is totally not something that we did earlier. And totally nope. was like, oh look, <laughs> look at, look at these, look at this record, a City in Color, A Pill for Loneliness, with all my fingerprints on this really shiny, <laughs> shiny. Hey. Vinyl, let me show you. Let me show you something. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, see, this is new for me. For, you ready for the exclusive? The... The exclusives? Here is test presses for the Drown 7 inch that got approved today. Oof. So keep an eye out because uh, this spring there will be uh, another. There will be, this will be out. Yeah. There we go. Awesome. Well, that wasn't that was that yeah. was not there the, the last time, and this was not a well. That whole portion before that was definitely a bit that we fun came up with it before. <laughs> you see, it says side A. <gasps> fuck, it's all blurry. Side A is not drown. It's other music that is yet that is finished, obviously, and is yet to uh, <laughs> yet to be released. So yeah, I'll have a uh... see. Look, we're talking about intertwining hardcore and folk music it's pretty random for a folk singer to be like yeah i'm gonna put a seven inch but like that's <laughs> uh, all the hardcore bands that i like did it so i'm gonna do it too there you go well that's the hardcore influence in you uh, yeah I, I i like seven inches i know that everybody like industry wise that i've talked to has been like what a waste of money like seven inches are like so expensive and you can't sell them for a lot like no one gives a shit like they're super annoying and i'm just like yeah who but cares have or like i'm gonna do it so you know whatever <laughs> so yeah there it is look at the exclusive two exclusives oh, in one goodness. interview wow i'm i'm so lucky right now <laughs> Anyway, Luke, continue on. Uh, I think there was uh, a few others that you may have oh, may have mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's like a bunch, um, but uh, probably like Dallas Green is the big one. Um, the one who made me, yeah. <laughs> City in Color, a pill for loneliness, available now at your local music retailer. I uh, I told you this story last time, but I'll tell you the story again about um. 
like the moment that I decided I oh, wanted the class, to the class play one. music. Oh, I'm jumping ahead it, of myself, you know. <laughs> yo, no, no, you're good, man. Yeah, when I was in junior year of high school, when I was in science class with my laptop open in the middle of a lecture Sorry, and my head <laughs> in, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, the teacher who was being nice, like, was always nice, was like, Luke, take your headphones out. I'm in the middle of teaching a lesson. And I literally took them out and was just like, no. And just put it <laughs> in. And I was listening to the first City in Color record. And that was kind of like the moment for me when I was like, the yeah. First city- I, uh, no, I'm just kidding. This is not the first City in Color. No, no. Definitely I not. I put that back. Sorry. Excuse me. I was not a. I jumped uh, ahead of myself a little bit in that one. <laughs> I was not a junior high school when that record came out. Yeah. Um, we're, we were. I was at the ripe age of. 105 <laughs> which is my age currently so yeah we uh we're getting old i guess we are, um you know I'm but uh <laughs> anyway continue. oh my god yeah no that was like that was it but yeah like he's probably the big one um noah gunderson is like huge for me um gregory allen isakov is like a massive influence. Just like every time I go and see Grigor Allen Isakov live, he just blows my mind. Like I just, just seeing him, just his show. Um, him like the early one when I was a kid mm-hmm. was definitely John Mayer. You know the guitar playing and just everything. Um, yeah, that's. I mean, I just love just like the troubadour style music, though. Not that John Mayer is necessarily like troubadour, but you know, like. Just all that stuff, like, I love, I guess it all still continues to go back to, like, the idea of, like, hardcore and this kind of music being intertwined. Like, someone like Noah Gunderson, who just, like, tore, first of all, is, you know, into metal and stuff, but he, like, yeah. just toured for years and just built it up, like, in a DIY kind of fashion and, like, you know, is doing good stuff. And same with, like, Greg Allen Isakov, who was a drummer in like a hardcore band and then I uh, basically like started writing you know or I, I don't know what his full story is but I mean like now he does what he does and like I went to go see him in a venue uh, at the end of last year and he played to like 1200 people I was like holy shit like just a dude writing simple folk songs and then he got nominated for a Grammy he just got nominated for folk record of the year and he's just like it's just like cool um you know, but he started the same way, like self-releasing his first stuff and just like playing to whoever whenever he could, and like yeah. had the itch to travel the way that like I do too. And so, yeah, I don't know. I just, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. No, more. I feel like I feel like a lot of like folk artists stem from that hardcore like punk so kind of mentality. Like literally, Dallas Green from City and Color. <laughs> I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna do the big guys. I, I I thought about it, but I was like, you know, I want to overplay my hand a little bit. You know, I gotta keep him guessing. But um, <laughs> I feel like with with City and Color, he's in Alexis on Fire. Obviously, yeah. they haven't kind of like they took like a hiatus break. But that's a that's a hardcore band. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and so like I feel like a lot of the artists that are in folk and why I like them too is just that they are getting back to the point we were talking about earlier about being honest. I feel like a lot of the folk artists have that. Honest honest approach and like when i listen to a folk track i'm just like wow this could very well translate to like a hardcore track even though it's not and it's played with like acoustic guitar or whatever you know it's it, but it still has that same sort of like emotional thematic. value it, it has yeah. that thematic yeah it's it's very thematic and i also just feel like you know a lot of the a lot of the lyricism is represented in like you know you know hardship and stuff like that and i'm not saying that all folk artists are like that but but they they just have a really good way of telling a story, and so I I have I have appreciated uh, folk probably more recently now, just because I've been I love hardcore and I love like heavier music, but I never really appreciated folk for what it was because you know I'm like I'm that edgy hardcore kid that only likes that just real gritty stuff, and then I'm like, well now I love City and Color, which again I'm not gonna do the bit I was going to I thought about it. see I told you it was gonna keep you guessing, but uh. <laughs> But yeah, no, I feel like that sort of stuff just hits differently, but it's still something that strikes me as a, as a person because it's still so like emotionally connected to how we are as as people, I guess. Right. I agree. 
There we go. Well, the next thing, Luke, uh, keeping it more uh, close to home, uh, what have you been jamming recently? What's on your Spotify? What have you been listening to lately? My favorite right now, uh, Silver Torches, Seattle singer-songwriter who I believe, I might be wrong, so I'm sorry to the guy who is Silver Torches if I'm wrong, but I think he's an independent artist. Um, and yeah, he put out a new song yesterday that kicked ass, so then I checked out both of his records that he had previously released, and they both kick ass. So I've been super into him for like about 36 hours, but uh, that's been what I've been jamming, and uh, it's great. It's like exactly what I've been looking for. Um, <clears throat> him, I was listening to Back on the Way Home, so like, cool. Um <laughs> I'm trying to think, like, what's, like, the most recent record that I bought? Like, I'm looking at my records right now, and I don't know what is the most recent record that I've I, I think this was my most re recent one. I'm not saying, I'm not, this was not a, this is, this is literally not a bit. I think this is the most recent one that I've actually picked up. Really? Um, I'm trying to think what mine would be. Maybe I'm just, like, a nerd. Let's see. Hold on. Wait. I might know, actually. I think the most recent pickup you got there, bud. All right. I can't remember which of these three was the most recent. You got so I'm gonna it. I'm going to three. I got The Carrier, uh, No Love Can Save Me, which is one of the coolest melodic hardcore. There was a Boston Boston um, hardcore band, and it oh, – so much glare got in it. It kicks ass. It's so good. If you don't listen to The Carrier and you like heavy music – if you if you like counterparts, and like if you, I know that this is not the right band to say, but like Capsize before they got canceled, but like that first Capsize record, when I heard the first Capsize record, I was like, this sounds like the Carrier. So listen to the Carrier, it kicks ass. Um, I picked up that. I picked up um, this Me Without You record. Ooh, nice. I like that. Before they. Uh, announced they were breaking up that I believe I just 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 picked this up so this kicks ass and then randomly one of the coolest record layouts I've ever seen the new Harry Styles record Oof. it is fantastic it's such a good listen and the layout is just like cool like it the inside is like fucking sick i don't know like well oh, that's kind of tight i dig that and i believe that it's not colored i believe it's just, just i can't black. remember i think it's just black but then it comes with like this poster of harry styles like naked basically oh damn and like i'm gonna have to blur this luke no he's not like you said he was naked dude he's not like actually <laughs> i'm gonna get so, so demonetized Do you see ah this? i got you yeah yeah, it's just a cool layout for a record. Um, and yeah, I think I don't know which of those three was the most recent, but if I had to recommend one of them as a listen, I'm going to say, even though this is, again, going to probably... Well, I, no one cares about me, so no one on the internet is going to be oh, mad. Oh, come on, let's don't say that. that. Let's pretend that, theoretically, I like had fans and people who cared... They'd be mad that I said the carrier is the most important one to listen to out of all of those three. Um, and that comes out of love. I'm literally going to see Me Without You next weekend. I love them. Um, but fuck you if you like melodic hardcore and don't listen to the carrier. So. Wow, damn. That was hard. Well, I mean, you are from the hardcore scene, so I guess that's that's warranted. But I also grew up like an hour and a half outside of Boston. Ah, so, so yeah. So this was, like, I know that, again, all people from Boston, like, fuck you, you poser, like, you didn't. Well, guess what? Just because I wasn't there in Boston with you, I was outside of it by an hour, and, like, that shit permeated. It wasn't, like, Boston hardcore and the influence that it had on hardcore only influenced people in Boston. And then if you were, like, <laughs> in a suburb of Boston, it was like, oh, I don't even fucking know what that is. Like, no. Oh it influenced Connecticut, too. You nerds so 
There you, there you go. Show them what you got, Luke. I love that. But I will say, not unironically, yes, this is probably my most yeah. recent pickup, and I love it so much. So shout yeah, out to City in Color. This is like true to form City of Color stuff. Like if you haven't listened to this, this was one of my favorites from last year. Like, and I had only listened to it probably like two weeks before I did my like albums of the year, and I still think it is one of the best that was released last year. And then a more recent pickup because I don't really get a chance to talk about vinyl, but uh, I think since Lucy, Luke and I are both vinyl aficionados here, that uh, I figured I talk would be the perfect time to talk about it. But I also picked up a John Mayer record, uh, Rainbow Square. Which is which is my favorite John Mayer record, um, my so I'm glad to have this in my collection. Uh, if Neon isn't your favorite John Mayer song, you need to get the fuck out of here because that's the only correct answer. That's not my favorite song on that record. You're gonna have to explain, <laughs> all right, buddy. Explain which explain. Please explain to me why any of these other songs on this record here are better. I like the one that's like. What the, uh, how does it go? My Stupid Mouth. That's the name of it. It's My Stupid Mouth. That one's a good one. I'll give you that. That's a great song. But I'll there's a you... bunch of ones on that record, man. That like... whole record is, is fantastic. I, I mean, I personally love Neon just because of that riff. I know a lot of people just say it, but, 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 but we're going to get, yeah, co we're going to get copyright song. claim. But yes, that yes. That song is great. That song that... is great. But. That is my favorite. So, shout outs to John Mayer. John Mayer, if you want to come on, if you're watching this, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Um, I know this was a bit from the last video, but you didn't see that because obviously we didn't record it. But, you know, thanks for coming on. Thanks for watching, bud. Um, I know you're a big fan, so uh, thank you for uh, checking that, the channel out. And make sure to go check out Luke's stuff, man, because I feel like you guys would jive well. But um, speaking of jiving well, the next question, Luke, who would you like to collaborate with and uh, and why? You already asked me this, and I gave you an answer, and now I regret don't answering it. <laughs> gave you, but now I, but now, but here's the thing: I don't like the answer that I gave you. There you go. So now you have another chance to get but it I right. But I still don't know what answer I want to give. <sighs> it's okay. Now you can think even harder about it while I talk about two of the records that I picked up recently: City and. <laughs> Just kidding! I'll stop doing oh, that. Oh man, uh, that bit's gonna be great. Who would I like to collaborate with? <laughs> okay, all right, I got it. You got it. I would like to do a folk-ish, very stripped-back record that was a duet record with Maggie Rogers. Ooh, I would like to. I think she kicks ass. I think her voice is great. I think her songs are great. I would like to do, uh, yeah, Maggie Rogers. That's it. That's the one. And, yeah. and I know you watch Maggie Rogers, so uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Shout out to Maggie Rogers. Um, but yeah, uh, you should uh, definitely hit Luke up uh, in the DMs because I imagine that's where all of the, the, the important things happen are in the DMs. So, uh, Not go. your like tons of managers not through tons of managers and... just dms baby that's who we're in 2020 we don't need managers i'm just kidding i don't know i don't want to disrespect managers so i don't know why i said that i'm gonna cut that out uh but uh <laughs> that would be very tight um i would be so about it and uh i feel like since i'm giving it the cosign and you know i feel like it owns a lot of weight now it's a good idea there we go. Maggie, Maggie Rogers, we're going to just tweet at you once this goes live. So uh, you guys can do a collaboration. So shout out to Maggie Rogers. Uh, but the next thing, Luke, because uh, I've you've been on here before and I've asked you some questions, but I'm going to give you some fresh ones. Okay. Uh, if there was one album you wish that you wrote, what album would it be? Well, I said <laughs> before... That it would Whoa, be... I mean, I thought you were gonna, I thought you were gonna play into the whole bit of like that we didn't talk about this, and you're gonna be like, oh man, this is so hard. But I, it's okay though; it's fine. I'm no, it's, it's well, because like, here's the thing: <laughs> my favorite record of all time is City and Colors. Hurry in the heart. No, oh, I was gonna do the bit, but I didn't do it. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but like, I don't know if I wish I wrote that record because it just is too good. Like it, I if I wrote that record, 
then I wouldn't have that record in my life. True. And then there goes my life. What's like a fine record? I wish I wrote the first Hosier record because it's a great record and it got him very popular. But in my opinion, there's nothing like, I don't want to say sell it in a bad way, but like you can tell like, I don't think that Hosier was trying to be big when he wrote the record. I think he was writing these folksy, bluesy songs. And then it just was so good that it, it got up. big. Yeah. But so, yes, I wish that I wrote that record, the first Hosier Ooh, record. Ooh, I like that. I like that. I'm going to have to put text up there because, you know, we're trying to help our boy Luke out here not seem like, you know, we don't want him to get all the keyboard warriors. So we want to, we're trying to help him out. So, future Brandon. Shout out to you if you forget. Well, I'm sorry, Luke. <laughs> um, but the next thing is, Luke, uh, I guess you can talk more about your project, uh, where they can find you at on the social meds. And, you know, I guess the I guess what went into the first track that you released? Like, what, what was your mindset going into it? Did you feel like, oh, I'm just going to do the single and not do a record or an EP or something like that? Or were you just like, let me just see how this goes, get my feet wet, see how it happens, and then go from there? Or did you have really kind of like a game plan going into it, I guess? Uh, going into it, I mean, we we booked ten days in the studio for a bunch of songs. We just are, we cranked out a lot of stuff, and we've only finished a couple so far. Mm-hmm. Because, like, I don't know, man. There's no like pressure for me. It's kind of like I'm putting out a song. Um, I have another one done. Like I showed you the seven inch and shit like that. Like I have more music done. Um, I'm going to do a record, but, like, yeah, it, uh, I don't know. I I definitely didn't just go into it with the intention of, like, putting out, like, one single, but, like, that's just kind of how it panned out, and that's that's fine, um, because I'm just learning along the way, like, what works best and what doesn't, and the music industry swallows you whole every chance that it gets, and, uh, I think that it's probably a lot easier for me to put out a single and get swallowed whole than it is for me to put out a record and get um, kind of just, like, forgotten. So, yeah, I mean, no, I'm excited to put out more music. I have another song coming out in March, um, and I'm in the studio in you know at the end of February finishing song three. So, I mean, like, I'm, like, totally going to keep putting out more music um you know i always i think there's this weird thing too with it i'm about to say like people think when i say like that i want to be able to make a living playing music that it inherently means i want to get big and it's like if i get big sick like yeah (laughs) yeah that's not like what i want like if i could just figure out a way to like put out music and be able to like travel and just like you know for a couple years and just like um be able to play shows and that kind of stuff like that'd be awesome so yeah i mean like i do want to genuinely get to the point where i just dropped a marker um (laughs) i uh i want to get to the point where you know i can you know just put more and more time into music um you know i just love playing there's just like nothing that makes me happier truly i mean you know, I could have... It's not that nothing makes me happier, but it's like, you know... Nothing could take that emotional place of something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's like part of my self-actualization to be creating and releasing music. And, um, you know, even if everything else in life is perfect, um, I still need that outlet to do stuff. So, yeah, I'm excited to just see what happens. I have, like, so many songs written so i don't even know what songs are going to be on this record i don't know when the record's coming out like i have no idea it's cool though to just be taking it day by day see what happens there we go well we're on day i don't know what day we're on for you day Day, two day two yesterday there we go day two um day two of career i'm fucking doing my thing it will be it will be many more days until this interview comes out but 
uh, go check out Luke's stuff. Uh, seriously, like a major, you know, boy of the channel. Like I had his old band Homestead on, and when I saw that he released his stuff, uh, I immediately DM'd him and was like, "I hope to never see you again." No, I'm just kidding. I was like, uh, "Please come on. Uh, I really want to try to get your shit out there because." I feel like, you know, we're in this culture that, like, and I had saw somebody post about it, like, a few days ago, about, like, you know, we're in this industry together, we're never, you know, I think a lot of people realize that, like, you know, y you won't get far if you're a dick in this industry, and so, like, oh. my whole thing is, is, like, I love all of my friends immensely, and I want them all to succeed, and that's mainly the, the foundation of why I started this channel, was because like there's so many of my friends that are super talented and they are all really great musicians and they're great people and I want to see them succeed so Luke is one of many but I I love talking to this dude I was, <laughs> if we could have saved the first conversation I, I it would have been great but seriously go check out Luke's stuff um, all of the links will be in the description where you can find out about him on social media all that sort of stuff and make sure to support your friends that really are doing this stuff because you know I feel like a lot of people don't take you know I, I feel like people overlook the fact that it's like oh well he's doing music or whatever but you know it's if it's something you're passionate about you're gonna take time to do you're gonna make time to want to do it and all that sort of stuff so go give Luke some love um, and if you enjoyed this interview make sure to share it like it subscribe make sure to tweet out Harry Styles Noah Gunderson John Mayer <laughs> John Mayer City and Color A Pill for Loneliness 2019 you can buy it at any re music retail i'm done with that bit anyway um you can go check out his <laughs> i'm just kidding uh go check out luke's stuff seriously um solid dude one Thanks. of the most solid dudes and uh great fucking first track so i'm excited to hear the rest of it and thanks luke for coming on again and thanks yeah. for dealing with my bullshit <laughs> no thanks for dealing with mine man bring me down to philly for a, a show we'll uh I'll play wherever. I'll play in your basement. I'll play in front I don't of have. <laughs> hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching, of course. Uh, if you enjoy what we do, make sure to go check out the other series we do. We do album reviews, we do band interviews, and we do live videos, so definitely go check that out. Um, hit that subscribe button. It really helps our channel, helps us grow. Make sure to hit that like button as well. Uh, go follow us on social media. That's all down below. We try to keep that as updated as possible. We also made a new website where we'll be posting photos of upcoming concerts and stuff like that, which you can go check out at audioaddictionmedia.com and come get your fix with us, guys. Talk to you later. Deuces.